Turn into Matthew chapter 16, beginning at verse 1. The Pharisees also with the Sadducees came and tempting, desired him that he would show them a sign from heaven. And he answered and, and said unto them, when it is evening, you say it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. Oh, you hypocrites, you can discern the face of the sky, but you cannot discern the sign of the times. Very subtle, but very beautiful rebuke. We do. How many knows if you step outside and it's warm and the sun shining that the weather is nice? If you step outside and there's snow going horizontal across the sky and there's ice on your doorstep and it's chilly, that, oh, that's not a very nice. Can you discern that? Jesus is telling us, don't hide your eyes to what you see, and it's the real weather. Come on. Come on. Amen. Amen. Mark chapter 4, beginning at verse 37. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. They awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? I kind of wonder why he was at the back of the ship and not at the front. But anyway. <laughs> carest not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind. <laughs> and said unto the sea. I said he rebuked the wind and spoke unto the sea. Peace. Be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? Yes. How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Yeah. Place your Bibles down. Each and every one of us, for our own accord, lift up our hands and talk to Jesus right now. Lord, open my eyes that I may see. Open my under understanding that I may know. Help each and every one of us to become true believers. Save saints of God with an understanding. Open my mind and heart, God, to what's going on in this world. Help us to be full of the Spirit of God that may lead and guide us into all truth that we ultimately step over that threshold into heaven. And everybody said in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated. There's a political term being used a lot today regarding our natural environment, climate change associated with global warming. It declares that warmer temperatures over time are changing weather patterns and disrupting the usual balance of nature. Now, while that's a controversial subject politically, I want to talk to you about creating a climate change in your home and in your own life. That things would warm up for you spiritually. And rather than grow cold, you become warm and have a climate change that's so desperately needed in these last days. Is there anybody here ready to change the balance of spirituality in your life? Yeah, well, five of you. Regardless of the traumatic events happening on the world stage, we each face problems and trouble in our own lives. And we dictate to the level that they control us. The higher level they control us, the less that God is in charge. Mm. In order to survive and overcome, each of us are going to need to create a spiritual environment in our own life, conducive to surviving 
the coming years. One of the things I got to bring out is that we confuse climate with weather. They are not the same thing. See, some of you can come in here tonight and worship God, praise God, but you haven't done it all week. <laughs> Climate is, in fact, defined as a significant and lasting change in the, the statistical distribution of weather patterns over periods ranging from decades to years. That's the climate of that region. It's what it's going to do there. So climate is more than weather. Anybody ever heard of a fair weather fan? The team's doing good. Oh, yeah. Come on, team. Oh, it's Sunday morning. Come on, Jesus. But you spend six hours on Facebook on Monday. You're able to pop and cuss and flip out and do anything else Monday through Saturday and come in here on a Sunday morning. Hey, Jesus. Fair weather. So listen, as I digress in this subject to try to bring meaning to this tonight. Climate is, in fact, what sets weather in motion. Climate controls weather. Climate dictates what the weather will be like. Are you with me? In other words, your environment or climate affects the weather or atmospheric temperature spiritually in your life, in your home. You, you can't turn around and say, man, my wife backslid. Uh, you had a climate that was conducive to backsliding. You experienced the weather your climate created. Climate and culture are almost the same when it comes to humanity and nature. So some of you are fighting storms and trouble and difficulties and you only get momentary relief between storms as they go over. But it'll return. The same struggle, the same battle, the same issues, the same problems. You live from storm to storm, from the same kind of storm to the same kind of storm. And it's frustrating when those same challenges in meteorology, it's called weather patterns. Most of us can associate that with natural weather patterns of places. We live in a state that most folks who've never been here think it's 115 degrees here all the time. And that's okay. You think that because I don't want your carcass here especially if you're from California or, or any other blue state. If you go up to West Washington, the western side, not the eastern side, it rains all the time. Count on it raining. That is the climate. If you go down to the deep south where you can get some of them red beans and rice, it's going to be known for its heat and its humidity. And I like it. I just something about it. I like it. Or for you northern folks, the cold north, it's known for its snow and its ice and its freezing winters. And I want absolutely nothing to do with you. But just like physical places have climates, you have a climate that you've created in your life. A walk with God hasn't evaded you. Your climate has only been able to grow what you've adjusted your climate to grow. You have your own personal climate and your weather patterns and weather conditions as well. You are known for your patterns. You're the kind of saint your climate dictates by, what you, by how you cultivate who you are. Wait a minute. See, some of you get upset. You go, oh, I'm, I'm not taking the ball from you. I'm handing the ball to you. You want a fiery ministry, then become fiery. 
If you want a word from God, then be speaking to God. If you want a more godly life, have a less worldly life. The ball's in your hand. Yeah. Oh, my God, I, 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 I ain't got it like he got it. I don't have it like she got it. Well, maybe because you're not doing it. Like, you haven't created a climate. Take responsibility for the climate. How many remembers the peanuts? And I'm not talking the food. I'm, ta I'm talking about the Charlie Browns and the Lucys and the, the piano playing Schroeder. How many remembers that little kid that whenever he walked around, it was like this swirl around him? Anybody remember his name? Pig Pen. He had his own little environment going on there. Yeah, they all did. They all had their own persona and environment. You decide God has left an open door for you and effectual. You can be spiritual or you can be carnal. You can be on fire or you can be cold. Is anybody ready for a little spiritual climate change? What kind of Christianity do you demonstrate? What kind of believer are you? Are you faithful or fearful? Worrying or worshipful? Believer or doubting? And that, that just stretches the surface. Listen, weather is what the conditions of the atmosphere are. Over a short period of time, right? That's weather. And climate is how the atmosphere behaves over long periods of time. So Arizona is known as a hot place. It, 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 I don't know about you, but it hasn't been hot in a month now. It's been kind of cool, actually. So we hear about weather and climate all the time. Most of us, in fact, if I want to know, hey, Eric, what's the weather going to be tomorrow? She pulls up a little weather app that she got. She tells me what it is, and we plan our days. Anybody else check the weather? Anybody else? I'll pay attention to it a little bit. But, but here's what I tell other pastors. I talk to them. I said, the wonderful thing about having a church in Arizona is we get to plan outdoor events, and 99.9% .9 of the time, we're going to have good weather. Oh, well, oh, oh it's not going to rain. Now, now when we get rain, now if I was up in Washington or in, in, in West California, man, it rains all the time. 50-50 chance of having a Church picnic go off okay with the softball game. Out here, we do the plan out here. We'll be fun. In fact, let's put the let's get some shade up. And so climate change is certainly a hot topic in the world, but it needs to be a hot topic in the church. You just can't sit back. You got to get involved in the climate change in your life. There's still a lot of confusion over the difference between weather and climate. So think about it this way. Climate is what you expect. But weather is what you get. Weather is what you see outside on any particular day. So if it's 75 degrees and sunny, or it could be 20 degrees with heavy snow, that's called the weather. But climate is what it is over a consistent period of time. Are you with me? It's what the place, or in this case, person, is known for. It's what you're known for. I think it's funny because some of us, we want to be known for our, intention, for our intentions. Did, did you hear me? Listen, I'm handing you the ball. This is this. In other words, you 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 control this. It is your weather and climate to change. It is it is it's directly you. You can be the kind of person that pleases God, or you can be the kind of person that pleases self. You can be a person that Bible talks about tossed to and fro, or you can be that tree planted by the still water. You decide what kind of person you're going to be. Your climate. Okay, are you hearing me? Therefore, we got to change the climate in our life and homes if we are to change the atmosphere in our spiritual lives. Because if we don't change our climate, we will expend all our energies fighting weather. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Honestly, most people are not fighting devils. 
You're fighting the weather and the storms you've created. They are the result of the climate that you've designed for your life. If you have a prayerless life, don't get upset. Look, you got look at all the time you got that the people that pray didn't get. Just think about all the other extracurricular activities you got. Don't, don't look at the guy that stands up there, that girl that stands up there and gets anointed of God in their ministry until you realize the amount of effort of climate change they had to pull in like, to have that. Stop and look, man. You got your life surrounded by a bunch of stuff. All they got is the anointing. Can we be real? So, to be honest, if you wake up to a storm in your life, how many people in here are honest enough? You wake up in a storm in your life, you're more apt to be praying that morning. Well, what if you wake up tomorrow and the sun is shining and the bills are paid and Cars in the garage, the washer and dryer works, the roof hadn't leaked, you wake up. I'll, I'll, I'll pray when I get to church on Sunday. That's that, 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 those are weather, weather saints. If you wake up to a hurricane in your life, you'll drop to your knees and you won't give a rip of anything else that day. You'll drop to your knees with that Bible in your hand and you'll plead the blood, you'll call, cry out to God. God, you have to understand, you. Hey, I, I'm wanting some weather and some climate change in my life. Boy, I, I should have been doing this all along. The psalmist said, before I was afflicted, I went astray. But now I've kept my word. So, so you may get upset at the storm, but that storm may point into an indication that you need to change the climate of your Christianity. Listen, life is life, and it's full of trouble. It rains on the just and the unjust alike. But I'm here to say there are some storms we can't avoid. Not all things going on in your life are judgments from God. And not all things that are coming against you are indictments or works of the devil. Sometimes we're just in an environment and we're just in a, in a climate and we got an atmosphere and it's your turn. It's your, your storm. It's your situation. But what kind of saint are you going to be when the storms try to, what, what will there be climate and storm change because of what you invoke on that day? Many times we, we don't like to listen to the man of God. We, we think that we can bypass the man of God. We don't get along with the man of God or, 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 or the man of God points out an issue or a flaw. Well, I'll get up and go someplace where someone ain't going to say that to me. And we, we've had, we got teachers having itch in here. We will tell me everything's good. Look, the, 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 this world's not a good place, folks. Now, we may live in what we call the greatest country in the world, but I'm going to tell you something. The problem with it, it's great for being worldly, but it's not great for being a Christian. A lot of Christians are tripped up with all the things of this life. Go read that, that, that chapter in Timothy where Paul's talking to him and tell him, listen, people are going to be lovers of pleasure more than lovers. They're going to be, why? why? You, that's here. We, we got everything at our disposal. We, we, we don't worry about anything happening to us. And we come in here and we find a seat in the house of God and we're, well, let's see what he preaches. You haven't worshipped, you haven't prayed, you haven't touched God because, well. In Acts 27, it says, in verses 10 11, and said unto them, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be with hurt and much damage, not only the lading of the ship, but also of our lives. Hey, folks, there's a storm coming. Nevertheless, the centurion believed the master and the owner of the ship more than those things which were spoken of by Paul. Let me tell you something. The prince and power of the air isn't, go isn't ever going to agree with the church. I know right now what I'm preaching isn't popular. But heaven's fixing to be the most popular place. 
like, like the centurion, you don't have to listen to the pastor. You don't have to listen to the preaching. But I tell you what, if you'll listen, it can, it, it can help. If you, it, it, if you stop thinking about what you think you're giving up and start looking at what you're gaining, you'll find out the stuff that the pastor's preaching or what the Bible says. You're really not losing anything by letting go of the things of this world and getting a greater grip on, on God. And you're gaining. You, 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 there are storms you can avoid if you'll change your climate. There are storms you can miss out on if you'll change your atmosphere. There are things you don't have to go through if you'll change your environment and, and change your weather. Well, let me get a little personal here. Did you? I need you to hear me. Broke people have poor spending climate. Don't, don't blame situations and circumstances. If you're broke all the time, you've got poor spending environment. Late people have poor time management climate. I tried to be all over the place on this because I know none of these are you. Self-righteous people have poor prayer climate. Uneducated people have a low learning climate. This one smacks me around a little bit because I, I try, but shucks. Sick people have a questionable health climate. I got a mandate because things going on in my life. I need to, I can't eat like the rest of y'all. I'd be dumb. Hey, it ought to be the same for all of us. Well, what world are you living in? I don't want God to work in my life according to what you're doing. I want him to work in life according to what I'm doing. You may not have a prayer life. Uh, brother Lou, I appreciate your fervency and your preaching and all that, but I, I, I want my own prayer life and my own ministry. You better get yours and get all you can get because I'm fixing to get mine and all. I, will I get excited when I get to get behind this desk. I get excited when, when I can be a part of the most important thing on this planet that someone today might change your climate and change your weather and make it that he chose the foolishness of preaching. I'm thankful for that. I don't want to be a has been or could have been. I want to be. Liars have a poor honesty climate. Can I tell you something? I don't care whatever your issue is. Maybe you got, maybe, we don't talk about this. Maybe you're greedy. Covetous. Maybe, maybe, maybe you just, you can't even call it a liar. You're just dishonest and you stretch the truth all the time. Whatever it is. I'm not going to talk about you being angelic because if you're angelic, then you know this isn't applying to you. You sit there with your angelic self and you have a hard time getting your coat and jacket and shirt on to bind them wings up because we all don't know how great and wonderful you are. I got to preach to some of us people that, you know, I got, a, I, got, I got a devil to fight that I look at in the mirror every day. I got a mindset that gets mixed up. I got a heart that gets caught up. I, I, I try to balance. I don't know about you, but I, I struggle and balance my time. God, should I be putting effort in there? Should I be putting money and time? Where do I put it? And then I turn around and, and remember life has lived forward, but it's understood looking back. And I took at the time I put into this person and that person and they don't pan out. And I wish I'd have put it here. And then, but I did my best at the time. But listen, whatever you struggle with can be changed. The Bible tells us, and Paul says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. I like that. I like the fact that, you know what? I was who I was, was yesterday, but today I can be a new man. That prayer of life can get better. My, my walk with God can get stronger. I can take that storm. I can take the storm that I created and learn something, change my climate, and I'll never face that weather system again. I don't ever want to be that kind of person. I got to run from the mess I made. But if we would just take and spend some time and effort on controlling my climate, it would alter the storms and the patterns 
the weather cycles would change. Oh, and nothing worse than someone coming in. Oh, oh, let me get my heart right. I can't preach this week. Come on. Come on. So, well, what is this, this part-time Christianity stuff? Uh, let me let me work on something for a little. What? What do you? Oh, okay. So this is just a. This is a this is a hobby for you. <laughs> what would happen if we were to say, "I'm changing my climate. I'm going to invite prayer into my life. I'm going to invite the Word of God and allow it to speak to me and and rebuke me and exhort me and encourage me and change me. Invite only godly things into my mind and my eyes, my heart, and my spirit. And when that starts happening in me, my home starts changing. Uh, my climate in my house starts changing. And, uh, and instead of my wife bickering at me and barking at me and upset with me, she, she can admire and look. And that's my man. And he's godly. And he's, he, he's someone I can look up to spiritually. He hasn't fed into my doubts. He, he's called me to belief and faith. He's led me to God instead of away with being a frivolous fool with the things of this life. We can change what's in the atmosphere. You can change the environment. It's like a gardener that steps out onto a plot of soil and decides that he's going to make a garden out of it. And he starts taking a hoe and, and picks and shovels and digging the, the weeds and the rocks and the debris. And he, he, he takes it and cultivates. Why have some of us stopped cultivating ourselves? Why have you stopped allowing? Where, where's that fiery message you should have preached? Where's that song? Where's that song you should have reached? Have you allowed the coldness of this world to weak inside of you? And here you are. You've turned into just someone that shows up and finds your seat. Well, what are you talking about? I'm talking about the Jesus said the laborers are few. You don't hear the world complaining about people working for it. Where are they? Where are they? It's sad when Christians are more concerned about full cupboards and closets and they're okay coming to an empty church. That gardener adds fertilizer. He puts some water. He tends to it daily. And pretty soon, barren ground can become fruitful. In other words, he changed the climate. And now something that never would have produced anything has sprouts growing. And pretty soon roots are going down and plants are screwed, And fruit. But sadly, we have a tendency to react to the patterns and never do anything to address the climate that is causing those patterns. And you're the same today as you were last year and the year before and the year before and the year before. Can, can I get a spouse looking at another spouse and go, come on, man, he's talking to us. We got a higher call and we got to get back to cultivating what God is. He didn't call me for five minutes. He called me for my whole life. Some of you and some of me. I've been fighting that same fight. Oh, you just get a new version of it every 10 or 20, 30 years. You, you get upset at the weather, but you never deal with the root of the problem. You never deal with the climate that's causing the weather. You never really deal with the issue. Let me see if I can show you what I'm talking about from what Jesus did. Matthew chapter 9, while he was saying this, a synagogue leader came and knelt before him and said, my daughter has just died, but come and put your hand on her and she will live. Got any believers in here? And Jesus got up, went with him, and so did his disciples. And when Jesus entered the synagogue leader's house, he saw the noisy crowd. There was a disorderly crowd there. There was people there. The difference between a crowd and a congregation. And people were these, were, these were paid mourners. <laughs> they were people that were called in just specifically for funerals. And in this version of the Bible, Jesus says, 
go away. This girl's not dead, but asleep. But they laughed at him. Now, you may not laugh out loud. But understand, when this type of message gets preached, God watches if you take it to heart. He watches if you finally decide to put down some worldliness and pick up a shovel and cultivate your life that you may be productive. The King James Version says they laughed him to scorn. And so after Jesus put the crowd out, what? He put it out. In fact, the original literally infers he forcibly threw them out. And he went in, took the girl by the hand, and she got up. Another version says, by now they had arrived at the house of the town official and pushed their way through the gossips looking for a story. Don't let me know you're wanting the story of stuff, especially if I walk in here and I never see you in an altar, I never see you praying because you remind me of the people right here. I don't ever want to be someone that wants the story, but don't pray. You better hear what I'm saying. We got to, I don't want to be a gossip. I want to be in the gospel. You want to know everything that's going on, but you don't pray about anything. Come on. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Jesus was pretty abrupt here. Well, man, you can't be like that. What am I trying to do here? Please the crowd? Or meet the need? Jesus says she's not dead, she's sleeping. They said, you don't know what you're talking about. What? When I'm preaching the word, if you, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. You don't know about my life. Oh. So this doesn't apply to you. You're not human. But Jesus didn't mess around. He was curt. He was abrupt. He instantly, intentionally, and yes, forcibly took control of the climate. This guy came for a miracle. This guy came, came for a need. This guy, this guy, this guy was facing the, the worst thing in his life. What is the first thing Jesus did? He took care of the climate. It is from that understanding I mentioned a few things quickly about climate control. Climate control precedes climate change. I, I mentioned to someone prior to service, I said, uh, some people are kind of acting like it's cold in here. While we don't want to turn, turn on the heater, I don't, I don't want the heater to come on, turn everything off to where it just sits. No, I don't want, I don't want to, anything to affect the climate. <laughs> but I could have said, do this, it would have affected the climate. Okay. Jesus is showing us that in order for there to be a climate change, there must be climate control. Listen, I'm not just talking about church, and I'm not just talking about you. I'm talking about your life and your home. Make this bigger, especially if you got children and you don't live alone and you got a wife or you got a husband. He controlled the climate rather than the al allowing the climate to control him. They're all weeping. She's dead. They're all weeping. He didn't walk in. Oh, okay, I guess that's going to have to be it. Uh-uh, get these folks out of here. Get this mindset. See, so, some of you don't understand. There is addition by subtraction. And I know this preaching isn't popular, but you're going to hear it. If you're sitting around watching movies and TV, I don't care. But that's the climate and environment you're bringing into your home. Don't get upset at your children if they think promiscuous sex is okay. They're seeing it all day long. Don't, 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 no, 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 I'm not, I'm not, hey, I'm not saying you're going to hell for watching it. I'm saying you're sure making it difficult to go to heaven. Garbage in, garbage out. Mm -hmm. You're letting the dirty peanut walk into your house. Don't get upset. You're, you're opening the door. Don't get mad. Man, you're trying to take that from me. No, I'm trying to give you something. Yeah, do, you, do you really want that over a closer walk with God? Do you, do you really want that over a connection with God that other folks don't have? Do you really want, to, really want to walk around and know the whole intention of that series, but you don't know what God's doing today? 
Do you really want to walk around and know everything about that movie, but you can't walk in here and lay hands on the sick and then recover? Lay hands on those that need the Holy Ghost. Some of you know anything about a bunch of stuff that don't mean it, but do you know what God wants to do in the heart and the life of someone in this building tonight? Jesus cleared the house. He didn't wait for it to clear. He didn't wait for people to wander out that needed to be kicked out. You can't do that in the church today. No, you're right. Not in a church that ain't going anywhere. Jesus recognized instantly before there could be any real change and before the climate would be conducted for a miracle, he had to deal with the atmosphere. He had to create a different climate. That's why, that's why the Bible says about the fearful and unbelieving. Let me tell you something. You, you need to walk in faith because without faith, it's impossible to please God. You have to create a different climate. You have to remove the doubt, and the, the haters, the scoffers, and the unbelievers. Healing can't enter where hate exists. You need to hear that. You're asking God for a climate change. Anybody? but you're, no long, you're not willing to control the atmosphere. You want climate change. Listen, I'm putting the balls in your hand. You want the climate in your home, in your spiritual life to change. How many want to be on fire for God? How many want the word of God to become alive to you to where you want to read it? How many want, no, I don't know. For the sake of being wounded to the quick, how many look forward to being in church tonight? Don't lie. Don't lie. Don't they don't no 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 hold up. I, hey. I how many still feel this is where it's at? <laughs> you have an opportunity when you realize that you'll control that atmosphere, God can change your climate. If you'll control the atmosphere, God can do wonders with your climate. There are, there are things in your life that are dead and may seem past recovery. But if you'll take control of the atmosphere, that climate of life can come into your place. Elijah dealt with the climate before he dealing with the weather. He obliterated the false prophets so that an entire nation turned back to God. Then he prays and asks for the weather to end the drought. You can't expect to have a climate change if you won't deal with the atmospheric distractions in your life. That's not up to me to tell you what that is. But if you're not as spiritual as you're supposed to be and you're not fulfilling the purpose that God gave you, it's your responsibility to find out where that is. You want a change to righteousness in your life, but won't control the climate around you? It's hard to be walking in the righteousness of God and you're walking in the world's worldliness. Let, 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 me, let me give you a case in point. Saul was content to being called once, but not to live the life to remain called. But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. And an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. Listen, there's always a trade-off. Look, it, it, as more of the world you have, the less of God you're going to have. It's just all that you, and you have to find where that is. And to each his own, that, that's, not, that's not mine. I'll be honest with you, I am thankful for the guys, all the, I'm, I'm thankful for Brother Monroe that won me the Lord. I'm thankful for so many people that I saw in my life that were better than me. Better prayer life. Knew that Bible better than me. Knew, oh, boy, I tell you, put a fire up under my crawl. You ain't not praying me. You're not going to know that Bible better than me. Oh, wait a minute. You don't understand. Maybe that don't appeal to you. And that's what maybe, maybe you are not called to this. But if I'm called to this, I want to be good at this. 
I ain't up here to give you my ideas and my thoughts. What such saith the Lord? I'm telling you, God wants to do some climate change. Some of you are on the threshold to the greatest move of God in your life, but it can't happen if you won't take charge of the atmosphere. I'm not going to allow that in here. I'm not going to let that. You're not going to say that to me. I'm not going to follow. Ah, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I believe Joshua. I believe Joshua can say that because he wanted a life that, ex that expressed that. And that's why he was chosen to do that. But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. And the evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. Now listen to this in, in, in 1 Samuel 16, 23, a few verses later. And it came to pass when the evil spirit from God was upon Saul that David. See, your replacement will always worship where you're angry. I'll tell you, okay, trust me, the law says don't let, beware of someone steal your crown. But we got, we got a situation right here where someone stole the crown. One, oh, I got the position. I don't need to do nothing now. Oh, yes. Saul was probably so enamored with his, his polished uh, uh, armor on the tent while Goliath stood out there for 40 days bellowing and couldn't find someone to fight. And God said, I don't need someone with all that. I don't need someone with a title. I don't need, just give me someone willing to change the atmosphere and I will alter the climate and give the church the victory. Listen, listen, listen. You have to understand David's victory was connected to the tribe of Israel. Your victory directly affects the tribe. If you're sitting around more concerned about other things, it's going to be hard for you to lead the church to victory. David took the harp and played with his hands, so Saul was refreshed as well, and the evil spirit departed. Do you realize that Saul's entire walk with God was now predicated upon David's walk with God. I'm going to say something you won't hear in most churches. You need to get this thing for yourself. Yeah. Young people, don't be ignorant. Don't, mom and dads ain't enough. You better get this for yourself. Man, we can tell you of addictions and problems of young people didn't make it to 20, didn't make it to 25, didn't make it to 30. I can tell you, so trust me, you didn't, you don't have some secret token to where you're you're gonna bypass. You gotta make the decisions and the choices that will be the culmination of your life. David showed that being God-centered can change the atmosphere in your life and in your home. Many of us deal with weather, weather patterns that will continue until we take control of the atmosphere and alter the climate in our life and our home. Some people's folks are constantly going to be dead. They won't deal with the climate of overspending. Some people are always going to have to deal with broken relationships because they will not deal with the issues in their character. People, there's some people that'll never keep a job because they just sim simply won't address the climate of laziness. Some people are just not going to be pure people. They won't manage or take control of their flesh. Some people are going to be in constant turmoil because they won't deal with their double-mindedness. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. You cannot serve God in mammon. You can't serve, serve God in money. You can't. I know you think you got it navigated. But trust me, you're, 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 you're serving money. It's, it's interesting because the Bible says he's not far from any one of us. But yet the, the rich young ruler came and walked away sorrowfully because one thing was big enough. Mm. Jesus is so clear about this. He knew that if there's going to be change, he has to first deal with the climate. Humanity built a climate that was so disorderly, and God is a God that operates in order. The climate was chaos. 
He's a God that doesn't operate in confusion. So he knew he could heal Jairus' daughter, could fix the condition. He called it sleep. Everybody else was calling it death. He steps in and controlled the climate. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Prior to the operating in the gift of healing, Jesus removed the doubters, removed the paid mourners. Those folks that were there mourning, playing music, making a scene, weren't concerned about family members or close friends. In fact, in accordance and compliance with the custom of that day, they, they, they were paid to be there. Let me say, it was a paid gig. It was their job. Don't mess up with my job, Jesus. This is why I'm fixing to get paid for this. Don't you come in here and shut down. There was no emotional investment. They were just there to get a paycheck. They had to be forcibly removed, not because they cared, because, but because they were more worried about losing a check if they left. There are people in your life who have made a profession out of celebrating the death that some people are living through. There are people that sit back using your poor weather conditions to entertain themselves. Listen, I'll be honest with you. I don't tell everybody what's going on in my life. I, because there's some people that they're just paid mourners. They're just there for the gig. They're not there to really pray. They're not there because they want to see healing. They just want to know the dirt. I'm going to tell you who I'm going to tell. I'm going to tell the people that know how to pray, Sister Verdell. I'm, I'm going to ask certain people to pray, and I'm, gonna, I'm not going to ask the other people because I'll be honest with you, I want someone that really wants to, let, 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 let's get the, the onlookers and the gossipers out of the way, and let's get to those that want to alter the atmosphere and change the climate and speak life where there seems to be death. Let, let, me, let me say something to you. The, the, the whole world watches with interest when you show up with a Katrina moment in your life. Everybody wants to watch, but who wants to rush in and help change what's going on? Uh, don't become a weather spectacle or entertainment for someone that, that, uh, that all they're doing is looking at you. Oh, there they go again. So, oh, look what's going on now. They're professionals. You won't see them in an altar break in a sweat and prayer and travail. You won't find them standing their feet, waving their arms and worship and seeking the face of God for you. Oh, I'm telling you, you need to hear what I'm saying. Believe it or not, there are people that are rooting for your storm. Oh, you need to hear what I'm saying. There are people that are rooting for your storm because they like watching you go through things because they feel that you're going through it. They're better than you. They're hoping for your next storm. They, they like to see the turmoil in your life. They don't want you to get healed because if you get healed, it reveals the sickness and death in their life. And Samuel, 1 Samuel, Eliab, his eldest brother heard when he spake unto the men and Eliab's anger was kindled against David and said, why came us down hither and whom I thou left those few sheep in the wilderness? Look how he's just talking to him. I know, I know the pride and naughty. He didn't know his own pride and naughtiness. Slap this guy thine heart, for thou art come down, thou mightest see the battle. Wait a minute, you're the one who's been standing around watching for 40 days. Hey, this is close to home. You go try to teach a Sunday school class and you got someone to fight with you all the time. You go try to seek the face of God to see someone get healing and you, you can't get no one to really pray. Oh, they'll gossip and text and talk, but you'll never see them up here. They ain't going to come early for prayer, urgency to seek the face of God. You go try to build a church and all they want to do, you got to do it their way. Let's get real about this thing. Whatever happened to really sincerely singing the faith, what do you want me to do to get the climate change that we need in my home, in my life, in my church, everywhere that I go, help me to change the atmosphere and create a climate. 
And David said, what have I now done? Is there not a cause? When's the last time you found that in your own heart? Is there not a cause for me to be in prayer? Is there not a reason for the seriousness of changing the atmosphere? I created a climate with a power and a move of God. There's some of you I can't let you speak. Because you're going to want us to worship, but yet you sit there like a knot on a dill pickle when everybody else is. Come on, Pastor. I don't want. I don't want. To, I don't want to embarrass you. Keep going. Come on. I, I know that's hard, but you need to understand something. I, I get it, and I ask certain people to pray because I believe they're going to pray. But I'll be honest; it's, it's scary sometimes. I want to see it happen in your home. I want to see it, but it's got to first happen in your life. And before it can happen for the church, it's got to happen in your life and in your home. And you're walking in the things of God. There are healing signs and wonders on the other side of this atmosphere change and this climate change. If we'll embrace the word and the things of God and say, is there not a cause? And we come running in here for prayer and running in here for worship and running in here for the word of God. And we go running out to make a difference. There are some folks, let me get real with some of you. There are some folks so comfortable with your current condition. Not only could they not handle the change, they're working against it. Like David, you're going to lose more people through ascension than you ever did through descending. Throughout the Bible, the Davids and the Josephs are mistreated because they were ascending. They were changing the atmosphere. They were altering the climate of their lives and those around there. there. There are people, maybe in your own family, trying to convince you something's dead when it's only asleep. You're not dead. It's asleep. And if it's dead, he can raise it to life again. If you'll change the atmosphere and let him walk in and alter the climate. I wonder how many Lazarus are in here just waiting to be called for. Your dream ain't dead. It's asleep. Your dream ain't over. It's waiting for you to change the atmosphere. We have too many people filling the rooms of our life with mourning, chaos, and death. Telling you, oh, sit down. Yeah, ah, you've done enough. Yeah, wait, wait, wait. Wait a minute. Oh, hold on a minute. I thought God got the final say. Why would I let you? I, I thought, God, I, I want to change the atmosphere in my mind, in my heart, in my hope, in my life. I want to change. When I walk into the church, I want you to believe and have hope and trust God can do it for you. Is there anybody here today that still believes that? There might be some things you need to dismiss. They may be seem like precious. They may seem important. But if it's keeping you from the king of kings, you need to turn around and glad. I dismiss you. I got no place for you. You're keeping me from my miracle. You're keeping what should be alive dead. Take the steps necessary. Get that stuff out of your life forcibly, decisively, abruptly, completely. Cut it off. Don't give them access. Remove the worldly rock. If you're going to restore a vehicle, you got to cut out the rust. You cannot let it remain. You got to remove the cancer. You got to pull the weeds if you're going to grow a garden. Because if you don't, real everlasting life will not come and cannot come. If you don't, the weather patterns will repeat and the same storm over and over, and you will go right back to what you've always been. Same sin, the same addiction, same worldliness, the same proclivities. And every one of those things, those hobbies, those habits will all cheer you right back into the same storm of death. It'll tempt you right back into falling. It'll, 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 they'll dance with you right back into distraction and destruction. Someone once said it like this. Sometimes. Hear me, I, I say this with all love, and I, I say this with understanding. 
God would rather you deal with the pain of their or its absence instead of the consequences of their presence. It's the mere presence of some things and some people that keep us stagnated in value your joy in the Lord more than their company. Value God's presence over their presence. Uh, Value God's peace over their peace. All you need to hear me say, some of you are allowing people and things to hang around that need to be dismissed. You're comforting what you should be confronting. And in doing so, you have left no room for Christ and the change that you really need and desire. And therefore, you're forfeiting the climate change. If you don't like the weather you're enduring right now, if you don't like the temperature in your life, you have got to be willing to address the climate, even if it involves cutting. Some time back, they found cancer on me. And, you know, I don't know where I got the idea they'd just shoot it with a laser or do something like that. They, don't need, they, know they, they, just, they just started cutting and cutting and cutting, testing and cutting. I went back four or five times and I finally, oh, you know, uh, you got to stop. <laughs> we can't stop till we get it. They cut so much that they had to cut my skin in a, in, in a diagonal this way and this way to pull it back together. Sometimes you need to allow the pain of cutting to get the piece of your victory. And the reason some of you don't have that piece because you won't dismiss the people and the things that not only demand your attention, but they steal your peace. And then there's no possibility for atmosphere or climate change. Jesus dismissed the drama, then he deals with the death. That's the issue. Let's stand. I'm going to say something here. I need you to hear me. Some people are more committed to their mess than you are desperate for the miraculous. And until you displace the distraction, there's no room for anything different. Did you hear what I said? Confront your climate. Confront that climate. Be honest. Listen, listen. I'm going to get on to what we all talk about. I got to eat better. I got to eat better. Now, you, you can't fast your way into good shape. You can fast for long enough to, hey, man, you're losing weight. But it's the wrong. You still need nutrients. Yes. So what's that saying? There's right and there's wrong. Yes. Yes. Amen. And if there's right and wrong in the natural, there's right and wrong in the spiritual. That's right. If I'm going to be spiritually strong, strong, I need a good spiritual diet. Amen. Oh, are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. If you're here, and if you'll be honest and admit there's a climate issue in your life and that you need to change and get Jesus' help controlling. You, re- you really need to evaluate what's filling your life. Acts 13 tells us, but the Jews stirred up the devout and honorable women and the chief men of the city and raised persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them out of their coast but they shook off the dust of their feet against them and came unto Iconium and the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Ghost. So this is some things you just got to get rid of and quit worrying about them. Romans 15, 13 declares, now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Oh, do you realize what a mantra that needs to be? 
Where's the joy and the peace? I tell you, it's found in the hope. Through the power of the Holy Ghost. you got to get the Holy Ghost full and overflowing. Anybody want climate change? Anybody ready to change your atmosphere? God is still a weather changing, climate altering, atmosphere anointing, miracle working God. Mm. I'm going to say a bad word. I'm going to say a bad word. Y'all ready? Obey. That's a bad word. If you'll trust God and obey him, you'll find he's still in the climate changing business. You see, he can change the climate of a den of man-eating lions. He can change the climate of a burning fiery furnace. Oh, there's still lions and they're still fiery, but it ain't. Ah, he can change the climate of a dark, cold prison cell. He can change the climate in your storm. He can change the climate in your home. And he can change the climate in your life. You'll see there's still the deaf can hear. The blind can still see. Lepers are cleansed. The dead are raised. The guilty go free. The lost are found and sinners find salvation. All because he is a climate changing God. You got to stop living with your dysfunction and the constant storms and let God change the climate. He's looking right now. He's looking right now to change someone's life. The Bible says the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of them whose heart is perfect towards him. But there's this little, last little tagline on there. Here and thou hast done foolishly, there from henceforth thou shalt have wars. You're not You've put God on the same level as a hobby or a habit or a pastime when God should be an all in passion. You got to involve God and obey. God is the key to that climate change. Don't just speak to your kids and your family about change. Be the change and show them. Show them what it looks like to go all in and put God first. Stop living on people hoping they catch your intentions and let them actually see you do what your words have proclaimed. And the day of Pentecost was fully come and they were all with one accord in one place and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting. They obeyed. They got in one place and one mindset and one purpose. And the house was filled. See, they filled the house. Then God, they, they all came and filled the house with prayer. And then he filled the house. See, when they filled the atmosphere with prayer and praise, God filled the house with presence. And then he filled them. There's an order to this thing. You see, God will fill the house with his presence, but he really wants to fill you with his Holy Ghost. Are you ready for that climate change? Is anybody here ready for the climate change? Are you ready to walk into a den of lions instead they're a den of pussycats? Are you ready to face a burning fiery furnace and realize the burning's not there because God has transformed the climate? Yes. Address the climate. Address the climate. Address the atmosphere. Address the atmosphere. 